When I came to the Cradle of Liberty Council almost four years ago, one of the first things that I did was I had a chance to go up to Resica Falls Scout Reservation up in the Poconos and visit with some of our scouts and leaders who were there. And I couldn't be more excited than to meet on the trail some of our scouts from the inner city of Philadelphia. And I asked them how they were enjoying their week, were they having fun, did they love the ranges, did they enjoy the pool, were they having fun swimming at the lake? And of course they said, yeah, we're having a great time, Mr. Templer, this is wonderful. So later on, I ran into their leaders. I asked them how the week was going. And the leaders told me it was going great, but it was a slow start. And I said, well, whatever do you mean it was a slow start? And they explained to me that for these scouts that I had encountered on the trail, this was their first time away from home. This was their first time out of the city. This was the first time out of their neighborhood in West Philly. And so these kids, for the first two nights, didn't sleep. The noises that they heard in the, in the woods that we thought would be relaxing to these kids, it was dark and it was scary. 
They didn't hear the sounds of the city. They didn't see the lights of the city. This was a foreign place for these kids. So it was right then and there that I realized that we needed to create that, that stepping stone experience for our scouts in the city of Philadelphia. We needed an opportunity for our scouts to, to experience the outdoors, to experience a tent camping, to experience sleeping in a sleeping bag. Before we rushed them out to Resca Falls Scout Reservation, we needed something in their backyard. We are on the precipice of being able to create that stepping stone for the scouts in the city of Philadelphia at the Philadelphia Scout Adventure Base. Through a partnership with the City Parks and Recreation and Fairmount Park Conservancy, the Cradle of Liberty Council is prepared to sign a lease on two and three quarter acres of property at the trailhead of the Wissahickon Park, right on Henry Avenue, where scouts can come on a SEPTA bus, get dropped off right at the driveway, hike down the driveway, check out equipment with their leaders, and set up a tent and camp right here in Fairmount Park, right in the heart of Philadelphia. The city of Philadelphia has one of the most beautiful park systems in all of our country, and we are so thrilled to be on the precipice to beginning to bring to our scouts the Philadelphia Scout Adventure Base.
a thumbs up. Uh. <laughs> I got two bullseyes. The swimming pool is nice. We ride the boats around the lake. It's really fun. Whoa. I have never gone camping before. Really? This is really cool. Whoa. I popped the woolly. Well 
Welcome to Cradle of Liberty Council's Corporate Campfire event. I'm Erin Coleman, one of the anchors here at NBC10, and I am so proud to be here this evening representing NBC10's longtime support of the Cradle of Liberty Council Boy Scouts of America. Like many things in our lives this year, this year's event has changed, but only by being online. The foundation of this evening, celebrating scouting, recognizing our corporate partners, and honoring business people whose careers and civic works embody the scouting mission remain the same. So thank you for gathering with us tonight. We appreciate your support and your passion for scouts and for scouting. To begin tonight's program, here is Troop 303 from Zion Baptist Church to conduct our opening ceremony. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. On my honor, I will do my best to do my duty to guide my country and to obey the scout law to help other people at all times to keep myself physically strong, mentally awake, and morally straight. A scout is trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, truthful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. Hello everyone, my name is Bill Sasso and I happen to be the chairman of Stradley, Ronan, Stevens & Young, a law firm that has been a proud supporter of the Boy Scouts of America Cradle of Liberty Council. The support of the Boy Scouts is very important to me personally because it was a large part of my growing up in North Philadelphia in the Broad and Olney area. My dad was a mailman, my mom was a seamstress. And without the Boy Scouts, I never would have uh, learned about camping. I never would have had the opportunity to go camping. And uh, also it was through the Boy Scouts that I learned how to swim. I remember they would take us from Broad and Olney to the Abington YMCA on weekends so that we could um, learn how to swim in their indoor pool, which was fascinating to me as a kid growing up in the city that there were indoor pools at uh, these places in the suburbs. Unfortunately, it was at a time when the city of Philadelphia didn't have their current pool system for the kids in the city. And that reminds me that the Boy Scouts were important to me as I was growing up, but they are all the more important to benefit inner city kids today. These kids, given the poverty rate of 25% in the city of Philadelphia, don't have the opportunities that we had growing up, even in a working class family. And the Boy Scouts provide much needed assistance, much needed experiences for them in a positive way. And that's why Stradley Ronan continues to support the Boy Scouts because it benefits our region's most precious assets, our children. Thank you all for your support. Good evening and welcome to the 10th annual Corporate Campfire Gala to support your Cradle of Liberty Council Boy Scouts of America. What a great day it is to be a scout. You know, but I got to tell you, this is a little, a little awkward for me. If you'd have told me six months ago that we'd be doing our signature fundraising event over the internet as opposed to in, in person and live where I can look out and see hundreds of your smiling faces as we have dinner together and, and, and celebrate some amazing people from our community. I would have thought you were crazy, but nonetheless, here we are. And if you'd have told me at that same time that you thought we'd be running summer camps virtually as opposed to in the woods, I'd have thought you were even crazier. But again, here we are, just fresh off of a great summer camp season where we had over 1,200 scouts from 32 different states participate in an online virtual summer camp program where they earned merit badges, participated in fellowship activities and all the wonderful things that scouts love to do at camp, up to and including uh, virtual campfires, which we had and broadcast over YouTube Live for people to, to participate in. But summer camp is just the tip of the iceberg of what scouting's been up to these last six months through this pandemic. Uh, starting off with, with uh, our unit meetings, um, 
you know, as, as this whole COVID haze set in on us, scouting's resiliency really truly shone through. Our scouts immediately responded by saying, we don't wanna stop meeting. We can meet using Zoom and, and Teams and Hangouts. And our leaders responded, our volunteers responded by saying, hey, we don't wanna stop meeting. We want our scouts to continue to get these great values in this awesome program that is their foundation. But in addition to those unit meetings, the council and, 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 the, and our volunteers have responded and created online merit badge opportunities where scouts earned thousands of, of merit badges on an online platform. Our Cub Scouts had programs that they could stream into their homes. Moms and dads could sit down with their scouts and work on activities and events and achievements uh, from, the, from the convenience of their own homes and try to beat down some of that cabin fever. But these programs weren't available to just scouts. These programs were available to all families, all youth, all parents, all over the world. They were, and they were available free of charge because of the support of individuals and companies like yours who are supporting tonight's event. Thank you so very much for being here and thank you so much for that amazing support. So through this, through this pandemic and, and through the, you know, all, all that we've been through in the last six months, all of us, um, I always look for a silver lining you know, there's gotta be some positive that comes out of this. And for me and the Boy Scouts, the positive is what a learning opportunity this has been for us. We've realized that, that there are more ways to deliver on scouting's mission than, than, than the camping aspect. And this virtual programming opportunities have provided that to us. So as we look to the future, what does the future look like for the Boy Scouts of America and the Cradle of Liberty Council as we come out of the pandemic and return to the new normal, whatever that happens to be? Well, I can't tell you exactly. I wish I could. I wish I had a crystal ball, but I can assure you of this. As we move forward, we'll be embracing a hybrid model. We are, we are absolutely 100% going to get back to the outing and scouting. We are going to get back in the outdoors, back to camping and hiking and fishing and all of the things that have made the Boy Scouts of America so strong and so vital in America's fabric for the last 110 years. But we're gonna bring in and we're gonna keep a lot of this digital material and this digital content and those platforms because let's face it, there's a lot of kids that don't wanna go backpacking. There's a lot of kids that don't necessarily wanna spend a week in the woods camping and hiking and fishing but they still want that character development. They still want that citizenship. They still want that men mental and physical fitness component that comes along with scouting. And we now know we can deliver that in their homes virtually. So we are gonna to continue to develop both of those. Now that means that as a council and as an organization, we are gonna to have to continue to our efforts and to support and grow our outdoor programs, our traditional scouting programs, and then have at the same time, build up in a hurry our digital programs and our online content. And that's where we need your help. Your support of tonight's event has been fantastic and we are deeply, deeply grateful. But uh, our Vice President, Mark Chaluti, is gonna be on a, a few times this evening uh, for some fun to need appeals. And we're asking, maybe you have a few extra dollars you wanna help support us with. Um, maybe you're participating tonight as a guest of someone else. Uh, but please give some consideration to supporting the two initiatives that Mark's going to share with you. They are absolutely critical in us realizing that vision of a hybrid scouting program, reaching a whole new group of kids that we weren't reaching before. And your support will be instrumental in making that happen. Lastly, before I close, uh, this has been an, a very, very difficult time for all of us personally, professionally. And I just want to close by thanking from the bottom of my heart and on behalf of the 16,500 young people served by the Cradle Liberty Council on an annual basis. Thank you so very much to our committee who worked so tirelessly to make this event a success so that we can continue to provide the character and life-changing experiences that we do here in the Cradle of Liberty Council. Um, even while they were struggling with their own personal and, and business uh, uh, efforts, they found time and they made it happen for us in scouting. We could not be more grateful. And finally, to all of our honorees this evening, thank you so much for your support of scouting and, and congratulations on being recognized for the amazing leaders that you are. Thanks and enjoy the, enjoy the evening. What about the dining hall? How was the food? Oh, it's good. It's good. Like what? Apple pie. Apple pie is my favorite dessert. Pie.
Even though I haven't had apple pie before, that's my first time having it. Here, it's delicious. And 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 Rasheem was happy that that they had dessert at one. Oh yeah, yeah. I thought they weren't gonna give us dessert at lunch, but yeah, they did. Food is awesome. What was your favorite meal so far? Pizza. Yeah. Pizza and pancakes and cereal and Fruit Loops and a worm. A worm. You ate a worm? Yeah, I actually bit it head off, but it didn't taste too good. What about like pizza? Do you guys enjoy the pizza? Oh, yeah. Not really, not I really. really. Like the pizza. Okay. It was well, we spicy. When we were at a campsite and the dads would joke around, so like um, when we had pizza for lunch, they said, I bet you we're gonna have spaghetti with the sauce of the pizza scraped off. And we had spaghetti that <laughs> night. And then we had spaghetti when we thought. <laughs> oh, and they said, um, or you can make ravioli with the pizza. Yeah. <laughs> you can stack the pizza and make ravioli. <laughs> no, no, it was lasagna. Yeah, lasagna. Yeah, lasagna. lasagna. <laughs> oh, you could like rav make ravioli like folding the pizza in the Just fold it in and fork it together. <laughs> fork it together. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta fork it. That's and then you gotta fork it. No, and then you try to pick it up and you just it falls apart. <laughs> You're like, no, no, what no, happened? No, it was no, perfectly wrapped. You work. Buddy, this is Mark Chaluti coming at you live from our corporate campfire gala headquarters. I hope you're enjoying the show so far tonight. And we are grateful for all the sponsors that helped us get to where we are. So far tonight, we've raised over $300,000 and we hope that you're gonna help us hit an even higher goal. Before I get to that, I wanna make sure we thank those who were our key sponsors tonight. Our distinguished patron, Sponsors, Independence Blue Cross, UGI, and AmeriHealth Caritas. Our patron sponsors, Affinity eHealth, Bayada Home Healthcare, BB&T, now Truist, Lev Lane, Pico, PNC Bank, Stradley Ronan, the Sattel Family Foundation, Tower Investments, Citizens Bank, PHL 17. Our benefactor sponsors include Comcast NBC Universal, EY, James J. Anderson Construction, Krieger Pipeline, Meriki USA, Miller Brothers, Miller Pipeline, and Pannoni Associates. Our participating sponsors are the Automobile Dealers Association of Philadelphia, Bryan Communications, Diversified Search, Intercom, Essential Utilities, the Eva and Marvin Schlanger Family Foundation, Great Western Services, Health Partners Plans, Intech Construction, KPMG, Philadelphia Convention and Visitors Bureau, Quantum Communications, Turner Construction Company, WPVI TV 6 ABC, Joseph and Kathy Martz, and Alex Brown. And now I want to talk to you about an opportunity. Oh, we also have additional supporters, which are showing on your screen now. Sorry about that. But now I'm going to go into our fund to need section. So we have a goal tonight. And we need your help to raise $16,000 to provide Cub Scout online adventure programs. So when COVID started in the spring, like everybody else, we had to figure out how do we deliver the Cope Scout program differently. We came up with these online adventure programs, which engaged over 409 total youth participants. Every day, they were engaged in a program for an hour a day. Every Friday, there was a wrap-up happening, and I would set my calendar every Friday to join them at four. We want to make sure we can provide Cub Scout online adventures as we move into the fall, you can help us do that by making a gift at colbsa slash 
org slash gala. So please go on, make a gift and help us reach this goal. Thanks so much. And I'll be back to you shortly after our honorees accept their awards. I'm David Lane, President and CEO of Lev Lane, a marketing communications agency in downtown Philadelphia. And I'm accepting tonight's award on behalf of my partner of almost 37 years, Bruce Lev, and myself. Well, I was a Cub Scout. I didn't move on to the higher ranks, but I do remember uh, Cub Scouting. My dad and mom had me involved in, in scouting. We used to meet at the local church once a week. Pac-19, as I recall. I actually have a extremely deep interest in the outdoors and in living in the woods and lighting campfires and and not tying when it comes to tying on a fly for fly fishing. And who knows, it might have all started back when I was a Cub Scout. Well, I was a, a younger account executive uh, working at a Philadelphia regional agency, the Elkman Agency, and we handled the McDonald's business in New York. We handled all of those restaurants up in that particular area. And we came upon a program that either was developed by McDonald's Corporation or by the local New York, New Jersey, Connecticut Scouting Council called Project SOAR, an acronym for Save Our American Resources. And uh, I stood up in front of that big co-op of about 150 men and women and presented Project SOAR to the McDonald's co-op there and they decided to move ahead with it and it was a great regional program for us. Each particular restaurant became the focal point of the distribution of Project SOAR materials, uh, litter bags, uh, flyers and things of that nature. So we had maybe 150 stores uh, distributing those essential items and then bring the litter back to a particular area and McDonald's awarded them with some gifts and some meals and things of that nature. As a matter of fact, I just happened to have uh, this patch which is the vintage uh, Project SOAR patch and I don't know if we gave them out to everybody at that time but I managed to find one online and I thought I'd share it with everybody. So uh, scouting was important for me starting my career. And had I and my partner uh, not been recognized by the group, I probably would not have remembered that this was one of the things that really launched uh, you know, my credentials in front of very important clients. Project SOAR. Well, my partner and I would like to say thank you for, for these awards. One for Bruce, one, one for myself. It's quite a recognition, it's quite an honor to be recognized by the Cradle of Liberty Council. Since Bruce and I began our business many years ago and moved into the city about 20 years ago, we've tried very hard to be part of the fabric of town 
part of the city, working with different organizations and clients in the city that we love. And we feel very, very honored to have been recognized uh, by the council. So we will continue to work as we have in the past, uh, trying to do good things, being involved in community organizations, and continue to work along with the Scouts in the future. So again, on behalf of Bruce and David, thank you very much. I'm Len Poncia, President and Managing Partner of Aquinas Realty Partners, and we are a real estate development and ownership group in the Philadelphia metropolitan area. I learned English in school. Uh, my first language was Italian. Uh, I grew up in an area in North Philadelphia near what, what was once the uh, old Connie Mack Stadium. Um, my mother, uh, who immigrated from Italy, uh, she didn't make it through fourth grade in Italy, living there all through World War II. My father uh, dropped out of high school here in the United States to find work to care for his father who had had a stroke during World War II. So uh, I was the first to go to college in my family. Uh, when I went to grade school, as I, as I noted a moment ago, I didn't speak English. In our house, we were, it was all Italian. Our neighborhood was an all Italian neighborhood. And, and although we didn't have much, uh, we did have the right, the right upbringing, the right, the right foundation, uh, faith and hard work and respect of others putting others first. And uh, I think all that not only speaks to what the Scouts are all about, but certainly what we should all be all about. And I was fortunate to have had mentors in my life that not unlike the Scouts, taught me English, uh, helped me through areas that God loved my parents, but not having uh, the professional academic background could have guided me in, but there were others who were, were there for me, just like the Scouts provide today. When I think of all those attributes that the Scouts of America tried to encourage, instill, motivate, and teach the kids are incredibly important. And as I had shared with you myself, coming from very humble roots and understanding what grounds you, what, what, uh, what's really most important. These are the traits, these are the characteristics that make young men and women the best that they can be. And uh, I think that's, that pretty much says it all. When you step back and you think of the Scouts of America and you consider the over 2 million kids today that over 800,000 volunteers mentor and coach and steward and teach, an organization that over its history, over 130 million kids have had the benefit of being part of the Scouts of America. It's all inspiring and when I reflect on the mission of the Scouts, respect of faith in God, duty to country, putting others first above yourself, developing your personal skills to the best of your abilities. I'm humbled. I'm humbled to be part in my small way of the Scouts of America. And I'm honored to be part of this event. Thank you. I'm David Bayada. I'm the CEO of Bayada Home Healthcare. We're an international provider of in-home services, healthcare services in 24 states and seven countries. Well, I think as a, what we would call inside of our organization, a community of compassionate caregivers, we think about what are the um, common values, common principles that bring us together, that bind us in who we are and what we stand for and create a sense of purpose that then inform how we take care of others. And so for me, whether it's compassion, excellence, and reliability, which are our three core values, or the 12 values that embody the Scouts, I think a sense of common purpose, a sense of common ideals, a sense of common values at the root of a community that comes together to uh, teach each other and, and share those values, but then 
um, bring them to others is something that is very similar between how we think about our work as uh, healthcare professionals uh, as very, being very similar to the ideals of the scouts. You know, you can have a set of values and you can be out on your own independent in, in life and find ways to uh, treat others in a way that's aligned with those values or you can come together as a part of community where you're constantly trying to strive for self-improvement, collective improvement, to elevate your consciousness around what those values really mean and how you treat others in a way that's consistent and connected to those values on a day-to-day -day basis. And it takes work, right? You, not everybody does the right thing every single time innately. And so by being a part of a community, you find ways to learn from each other, to get better, both as individuals and as a community together. I feel grateful and honored to have received this incredible recognition as a part of a community, both here in Philadelphia and more broadly, that's committed to a common set of values, a common purpose. And whether it's an organization or a company like ours or an organization like the Scouts, people coming together as a part of a community around common purpose is a really powerful thing. I'm an honor to be a part of it and I'm an honored to support it now and into the future. I'm John Walsh, President and CEO of UGI Corporation, headquartered in King of Prussia, Pennsylvania. From my perspective, you know, one of the things that draws me to, to the work that uh, the Cradle of Liberty Council is doing are those values and, and the importance of that. So, you know, I can certainly relate to the importance of uh, citizenship and leadership and personal accountability, um, wellness, uh, you know, all those critical values that underpin scouting certainly ring true with me. Um, so I think there's tremendous value in that. And getting exposure at a young age and being involved in learning those leadership skills and learning those citizenship skills, really, really valuable uh, to any young person. So uh, yeah, they ring true with me, absolutely. And I would argue that today more than ever, those values are critically important and it's really uh, great that scouting offers young people, young men, young boys, the opportunity to uh, get introduced to those values, become part of a group that shares those values a a at a young age. And, and it does create a bond. Uh, it, it does in any part of society. If you're part of a group and you have a common set of values, a core set of values, that could be a, a company or certainly in the case of a, a scout troop, if you have that common set of values, it, it's a permanent connection of that group and organization. And uh, today more than ever, I think we need that kind of grounding in core values like that in our society. And again, exposing young people to that and, and having them experience that at a young age is, is tremendous. My message to anybody watching uh, this evening is to, uh, if you're not familiar with the good work that the Cradle of Liberty Council does here for scouts in this region, please investigate, please get involved. Uh, uh, this council does tremendous work in providing the opportunity for scouting across the region. In particular, what drew me to this council was the work that the council did in the city of Philadelphia. Being somebody that was born in the city and raised in the city of Boston, Having scouting available to kids in the city is hugely important, and I really value the work that uh, the council is doing to make sure that any young boy in this region, young man who wants to get involved in scouting can. So I encourage you to uh, investigate and support the Cradle of Liberty Council. I got two bullseyes. I Only got one. Eyes. I had one that was on the red and it went all the way and it went through the back. And I was a lefty even mm -hmm. though my, I was left eye right domination. Wait, what is it? Left eye dominant? Yeah, left eye dominant and I'm right, but I have to shoot I left. Have a button. That's weird. <laughs> and archery, I hit two bullseyes in a row. Two? I only hit one bullseye. Yeah, you hit the edge of red. The yeah. edge? Yeah, you hit the edge of red. Oh. He was on yellow, but you hit the edge of red. Oh, yeah. It takes time and practice. But when you go to Boy Scouts, then you'll be shooting 22 rifles. 20? 22 rifles? Well, not 22 rifles, but the bullet's called 22. Ooh, <laughs> I'm about to say, I can't shoot like that. <laughs> Hi, 
What yeah. were the most fun things we did? Everything. <laughs> yeah, everything. Uh, mine would be archery and BB guns. Okay. BMX biking. Everything. Amelia, everything. what was your favorite thing? Everything. What about the pool? How was the pool, guys? Oh, it was great. 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 But you had... It wasn't as long as I thought it was going to be. Yeah. It was shorter. Yeah, I wish it was just like the whole day free out on, in the pool. Like you can go in the pool <laughs> anytime and know. not swim lessons. I have, I have, I have never gone camping before. Really? This is really cool. I mean, I thought we would like camp like in the woods and all that stuff, but like camping at a site is much better. I think this is the best place I've been to in this whole year. Hey, this is Mark Chaluti. I'm back here still at our gala headquarters, hoping that some other folks are going to join us by making a gift colbsa.org slash gala. I want to talk to you right now about our virtual merit badge classes. So our kids need to continue to advance towards the rank of Eagle. It was harder to meet with merit badge counselors back in the spring when everybody was stuck at home. Created a way that they could do virtual merit badge classes. Each one of these classes costs us about $300. 10 kids get to be a part of each one of these classes. So our goal tonight is to try to raise $9,000 so we can do 30 more online merit badge classes this fall. You have the opportunity to do this. Now, when we did it in the spring, our most popular merit badge classes were cooking, citizenship in the community, and game design. I think it made me feel really, really good that kids still wanted to focus on citizenship in the community. Again, we are grateful to everybody who has helped us raise funds tonight for our scouting program. And I really help that you, hope that you'll be able to find a way to go online, colbsa.org slash gala, make a gift and help us get to 30 more online merit badge classes that we can do this fall. A lot of kids still need things to do, and this is a great opportunity to do it. Thanks again, and we appreciate your support. Good evening. I'm Ed Sattel, the founder and chairman of the Sattel Institute, and I'm delighted that two of the Institute's founding corporate members of reputation were honored tonight. John Walsh and David Bayada, congratulations. As someone who has long been associated with the Boy Scouts, and as someone who has two sons who are Eagle Scouts, I add my thanks to all who worked to make this event so terrific. Dan, your team and the committee did a great job. Congratulations to you as well. I was asked to close this evening with my thoughts on the value of supporting scouting. Scouting teaches boys and girls to take control of their own life by learning lifelong skills and values. Scouting has never been more important than it is right now. They learn leadership development, hard work, resilience, integrity, teamwork, trust, and the value of learning. These are all great life takeaways from the scouting experience. Our youth desperately need well-delivered training in these vital life values if they're going to succeed now in the post-COVID world and in their future. In other words, they learn that being a good talker is not enough. They also have to develop good skills. 10 years ago, as the first honoree of the Campfire Gala, I spoke about the importance of scouting and then listened as the late, great Jack Templeton affirmed that same message. Scouting helps build resourceful, resilient, trustworthy leaders more concerned with achievement than power. They grow through the adventure, excitement, camaraderie, and life-changing learning programs of scouting. When business hires a former scout, they know they have the opportunity to get a great candidate trained to meet challenges 
in keeping with high standards. That is why investing in and supporting scouting is so critical and rewarding. The best and the brightest in so many professions, whether it's business, sports, political leaders, medicine, research, academics, entertainment, thought leaders, entrepreneurs, or even astronauts, all have one thing in common. They are proof of the scout motto, be prepared for life. I mentioned that my two sons are Eagle Scouts. In fact, one served on tonight's committee. I know Matthew and his toddler son will agree that scouting uh, played an important role in his life. Hopefully someday I'll watch my grandson earn badges, go to camp, help others, demonstrate resilience, and grow stronger and better because he's he's a scout. Finally, the scouts asked me to speak about why supporting nonprofits is so vital today. I consider nonprofits the heroes of our society. They take on the challenges that business and government are not prepared to address. They contribute to the quality of life for all of us. I will guarantee you, everyone listening tonight has been touched by a nonprofit, whether a hospital, a school, a sports group, a faith community, a civic organization, entertainment, or cultural events. Nonprofits make our world better. And so it's no surprise that nonprofits can use our help individually and together to keep doing what they do best, especially during this pandemic environment. Nonprofits like Scouts are caring and resilient. Be prepared for life. That's a big goal. We need Scouting to help our youth reach that goal. Thanks to everyone tonight for believing in and supporting Scouting. So we're going to build a fire because when we put a match underneath this, it's going to light up right away. About a quarter. Exactly. The person with the most tinder wins. What was a favorite thing you've ever done? Like the most exciting experience you've ever had in scouting? Fishing. Fishing? Tell me about fishing, man. Did you catch any fish? Two. Last year. How big were they? This big. That big? Wow. The other one I caught was this big. I'm impressed, man. You said you liked hiking. Have you gone on any cool hikes? Yeah, we went on a long hike, like a four mile hike. We saw a snake and, you know, little lizards. Wow. The little geckos. That's so cool. You guys ready to build this fire? Oh, yeah! I'm going to teach you guys one way to build a fire. It's called a lean-to. It's one of the easiest ways to make a fire. So at archery, on my first shot, it was a bullseye. Nice. On my second shot, it was a bullseye. On my first four shot, on my first... Let me get some... On you, on you, yeah, okay. <laughs> How about archery? You guys like archery? I got a bullseye. You got a bullseye? Nice. High five, man. On the first try. First try? We've had a lot of first try bullseyes today. Woohoo! Marshmallows. I love marshmallows. They're my favorite food group next to hot cocoa. All right, fellas, you guys want to roast some marshmallows? Yeah! yeah. yeah. Tell me something you learned. I learned that if I'm having a hard time, Keep doing it. Don't give up. To work hard even when it's hard to. Like when you're all mad. Yeah. You still have to do it. Even if you make mistakes, right? Like if you do something and you fail, you make a mistake, you're actually, it's a good thing. You're learning from your mistake. Exactly. Now, you had this little camporee here. What did you like about the camporee? We learned how to like cook with Mm -hmm. uh, grilling rocks and yeah, I know that. And uh, helping others with the tents. Cool. I, I know you said you wanted to be an Eagle Scout. Why do you want to be an Eagle Scout? Because um, I work hard a lot. I like to, basically I like to be better at stuff. Yeah. Like, when I started Scouts, I was lonely and I didn't have that many friends. And look, a year later, I'm sitting here with a whole bunch of friends.
I hope you enjoyed the evening's program as much as I did. I especially loved hearing from our Cub Scouts. I mean, nothing better than, than hearing what they have to say. And you can tell the fun that they have as a part of the scouting program. So many more kids in this, in this council that we want to make sure has that opportunity. And your support tonight has helped us to do that. I want to give a special thanks to our dinner committee, uh, whose names are on the screen right now. A lot of folks out there that really helped to bring in sponsorship to make this happen. As I wrap up, I just want to share, uh, you know, one little personal comment with you about scouting and, and how important it is to me. You know, as I was thinking about it on my drive out here tonight, it's actually 44 years ago this month that my dad walked me two blocks up to our church and I became a Cub Scout. Uh, six years after that, I became an Eagle Scout, and I have never looked back and have continued giving back to the scouting program. And the reason I do it and the reason I'm here asking you to help us is because we've got 16,000 young boys and girls, young men, young women who need this scouting program. And I want to make sure that they have that same opportunity to participate in this program that I did. So my final ask of you tonight, if you've watched our program and have really enjoyed what you've seen and you wanna to contribute to over the $300,000 that we've raised, we're actually $5,000 will get us to another point that we will be so happy with. Please go on colbsa.org slash gala. I promise you the return on your investment is gonna be greater than any gift that you have ever made. Thanks again for being a part of us tonight. We're so grateful for you and appreciate it. And we'll see you down on the scouting trail some other time. Thanks again and good night.